thinking about your decade of business? I'm thinking about that little still in the corner there. Seeing it work, learning about it back in Missouri, driving it home, pieces. <laughs> Literally the moon shining it up there. It was like I was flying through the windows down, rolling through Missouri. Like, I'm doing this, holy shit. This is, I got a still, you know? Yeah. It's a pain to clean, but man, it's, it means everything. That's where it all started. I bought it from Jim in 2011, right when we had first moved to St. Louis from Chicago. And that was back when I didn't have a job. I just quit my other uh, trading job in Chicago. We moved to St. Louis to start this business. And so uh, he taught me a lot about that and really kind of helped me get up and running. And that, and that still was part of it. And like, it was running in my garage and big Jake's out there hanging out like just for hours at nights. Um, and those are, those are some special memories. I founded the company June 30th, 2011. We didn't have a home, we didn't know, we are just an idea and we codified it into law on, you know, via the government of Missouri. We moved into this old Hardays, the gourmet French restaurant, in February 1st, 2012. We eventually gutted the place. You know, we kept a couple tables. Yeah. Of course, yeah. for the historical value. But man, moving that out and putting down our first barrels, you know, it was like it was pretty close to right away, because a little bit of it we had to come off that first still. It takes forever to age this stuff, but also it goes by in the blink of an eye, right? Right about the same time that we started this place, 2013, February of 2013, we had our first son, Mason, and he's nine now, you know, a nine and a half, I guess. But uh, that's what the barrels are. That's how we mark the passage of time, right? To things that mean the most to us. And for me, that's my kids uh, and this business, you know, and they're about the same age. My wife always jokes that we, like knuckleheads, we started a business and a family at the same time, and now, 10 years in, we have three kids in our family and we're a decade into business. I remember hitting all those milestones where like most businesses fail in two years or three years or five years and all this stuff. And like each one of those was a little shot in the arm that like, hey, you're not doing everything right, but something's working and you can keep going, you know? And now to be sitting here at 10 years and as one of the oldest distilleries in the state of Missouri, Good that's point. pretty cool. That's pretty darn cool. Yeah, it is. That's the fun in life, right? The unexpected and rolling with the punches and we didn't expect to, you know, uh, deal with and overcome a pandemic, but we did and that's another feather in the cap. I mean, this whole thing, this whole journey has just been trial and error and overcoming adversity and, and, and just dealing with things as they come and trying your best and figuring a way through. We chose Indomitable Spirits because we liked it, because yeah. I, I thought it was a beautiful play on those things, and I thought you needed it. The only reason that we are still here and still fighting is because of that Indomitable Spirit. I, on all the tours, I've given over 2,000, maybe 2,500 different tours over the years. Um, and thank God Andrew Jeez. Spock came along five years yeah. ago, <laughs> because he's given, you know, probably 500 to 1,000 of them himself. Yeah. But, all those tours and all those tens of thousands of people that have walked through here, one thing they've all commented on, and I think taken away from, is the idea that if this knucklehead can do it, there's nothing you can't accomplish, <laughs> right? And that's an awesome message yeah. because yeah. this is life. You know, you gotta mm -hmm. seize it and you gotta make it what you want to do. When you're starting up your own business, when you're working at something you love, and even if you're not the boss, you're doing it. It's, life is too short not to go after something epic and great. Great day. We're still running a skeleton crew, and the only reason we can do it is because Andrew and Andrea um, are willing to work their asses off uh, and follow me on this crazy thing. But you know, we were looking to expand a little bit, and the pandemic kind of kind of delayed those those visions because uh, they're still very much in the works. But on the other hand, I never imagined that we would win the best craft whiskey in the country. Because I never imagined that, it was never possible to think you could do it more than once. Nobody ever has. And we won the best gin. Every single freaking spirit we've put out, bar none, has won some sort of a medal at competitions that I believe in. 
and that makes us the most awarded distillery in the state of Missouri and one of the top four in the United States that I'm aware of. That's amazing. I mean, awesome. <laughs> you ever just think about that? Like, I do, and I don't believe does it. Does that just pop in your head at night? Like, the awards, your library, the amount of spirits you've been able to release. Yeah, the Rally Point was our first and kind of most personal spirit. I, just because it was the first. Big Jake and Rally Point, same, same recipe, unaged, aged. Big Jake and Rally Point and how they're like the mom and the dad and they started this whole thing and then we have kids and grandkids and cousins and all this stuff and it's grown into this right now. Our goal here is to make the best possible batch every time because that's what we're trying to give our loyal fans. And one of the best ways I think we've done it is with the experimental program, which is, to my knowledge, completely unheard of in the distilling world. I know of no other distillery that's ever even attempted something like that. And going back to the accolades and people telling you how good it is, that is a healthy dose of reality because the whole point of the experimental program is to get honest feedback. Like some of my favorite times, my favorite time is being in the distillery in the morning. I get in here early because nobody else is here. It's my time and I and by getting in early, it gets me home to spend more time with the family in the evening, which is what it's all about. At night, like after Friday nights or whatever, when I turn it off and it's dark, and there's just a little faint glow on the library in here, it's, this is my happy place. I wouldn't be here alone. Like that's one of my biggest mistakes is trying to get here alone. We'd probably be further along if I didn't try to do that so hard. Undeniably, one of the great things about this and one of the most rewarding things of this whole decade working here are the different collaborations that we've done and the different people that we've gotten to use, work with, and learn from, right? I mean, when I think collaborations, my first thought is call these. They were our first collaboration that we ever did, making the breakfast brew. All those guys have been phenomenal to work with. They've been uh, inspirational peers. They've been people that have been always willing to help out however possible, and they're, they're a company and a culture that I aspire to one day. We've gotten to work with most of the local breweries and have plans to work with the rest. We've worked with toffee makers, we've worked with um, chocolatiers and people making other distilled spirits, beers, wineries, and, and not to mention all the restaurants and foods and local tourism bureaus. and, and the network, and I mean, St. Louis is nothing if not the biggest, Reno can go to hell. St. Louis is the biggest small town in the world. Yeah. And, and the way that's been proven time and time again has been really amazing to me. This company has been incredibly gratifying on so many different levels. And I, I mean, I'm incredibly thankful and I pinch myself to think that I still get to make booze. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and Missouri's great and it's got a lot of things going for it. And it's all those things were a huge part of the reason that we located in Missouri to start this distillery from Chicago. Um, it was because of what's going on here. The other distillers that started around or a little bit yeah. after the same time that we did, we've all been, we've cut our teeth, we've been here and we're like, okay, we need to, we need to get together and unify if we're going to really do anything and change anything. And I, all credit to him, Gary Heingartner was the one that really led the charge to get us to create a state guild. And he was our first president. And, and by some weird stroke, I got to be our second president of the Missouri Craft Distillers Guild. And I hope one day to have a much better reputation than John Adams. But anyway, um, <laughs> and in 2019, during my presidency, we passed a bill into law. So I got to go down Jefferson City. My testimony is on the state record, you know, as a Senate testimony in support of this, uh, talking about it. And we created Missouri Bourbon, which is an actual thing. So no matter what else happens, Missouri Bourbon yep. exists. <laughs> and that's, I think that's pretty damn awesome. My little, my real baby there, the Missouri Spirits Expedition, which is our statewide distillery trail. And yeah. because I love the Lewis and Clark Expedition, kind of guided it that way and embraced our local history there. And we had an event 
at the arch 215 years to the hour when they left. And, and I think that's one thing that's really cool about the distilling industry and St. Louis in general, is that collaborative spirit, is that working together and trying to help each other. The, the acclaim that we've gotten on the national stage is something that I've never really dreamed was realistic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not only winning the best in class for the whiskey twice, but winning the best in class gin. We've won, I think, at this point, 15 different best in category spirits for our different stuff. Distilleries that I look up to, I've got their products at home. And in a lot of cases, you know, our spirits were in the same competitions. And it's, <laughs> it doesn't, it feels That's like unreal. imposter syndrome. How is this possible that we could be this little distillery that could, you know, in yeah. here, hiding in plain sight right downtown yeah. St. Louis, putting out allegedly some of the best brews in the United States. I have a vision for this place that is grander and greater and is ultimately, can only be achieved beyond me, right? I have said from day one, if I live to see the greatest heights of still 630, that will be a failure to an extent there. Yeah. Um, because I, it's got to get bigger than me. and It's got to grow beyond me and beyond my lifetime. That's the real goal. We've got a Solera aging program for our single malts and our rums that will come to fruition one day. We're going to release our first 10 year old whiskey this October uh, of 2022. When I think back, to the beginning and to, to how we've gotten here, the, my first thoughts go to the people that got us here. And it's, it's not just our collaborations, it's before that. It's the people that allowed this dream to exist. First and foremost, that's my wife, Sydney. Love her to death. Without her blessing and encouragement, encouragement so many times where I was so down and just exhausted. And without her, we wouldn't be here. Troy Pullman my father-in-law um, is is been my advisor, my mentor. And he, without him, we wouldn't be a, a going concern, a good business in here. And I, I can never give him enough credit. Jim Schultz built all our stills. Dyke Minnick's Ben Pippinger, my two great friends who, who invested. So Jim, Dyke, and Ben are the three uh, owners of the company, apart from myself. <laughs> but but th those were the guys that believed in this crazy dream and put their money where their mouth was. Yep. And that allowed us to get going, get started. And um, that was an emotional, that was a heartfelt thing to me that I took personally. Andrew Spa has been with us five years at this point, more so. He's my right-hand man. He's, he's the reason that we're anything outside of there. He's got an incredible palate. I rely on him probably more than he knows. I, all, the, all the dear friends and family from, from high school and college that have encouraged and bought bottles and everything. I mean, my family's been supporting and encouraging and all yeah. that stuff from day one. And that, without them, it couldn't be we wouldn't I mean, be can you imagine doing it without that? No, I, I can't. can't. I couldn't with I my own business. But my dad has been there from the beginning. He was here, I and mean, my sister's always been great too, but my dad was here, and he, I, I can picture my dad and sister and Adam Goldstein and stuff bottling up our pre-release. It was our first batch. I'm pointing there because they were doing it right back there in the back, bottling up our first bottles of Big Jake and Rally Point for our grand opening party that we had. To me, this, this place is not only our livelihood for our family, this is our retirement plan. This is our college fund. This is our vacation fund. This is this place is everything for hopefully future generations of Weglars. We are trying to be an awesome part of an awesome city. Set it from day one. I want people to think of the Arch, the Cardinals, and still 630, and not in that order. After 10 years, I think we can say we're on our way. This is why we make spirits. It's not just for the drinking. The drinking is secondary to the act. Yep. The act is sharing good time with people mm -hmm. you care about. That's right. Whether it's friends, coworkers, collaborators, family, 
That's what it's about. When you start a business, when you close a deal, when you have the birth of a kid, when you have a wedding, or where you get fired, it doesn't matter. Major life important decisions are when you bring in the people closest to you, you commiserate, you have a good time, you have a heart to heart. I want to make spirits for the heart to heart. That's what Cell 630 was based on. Cheers, brother.